Hey everybody, Carissa Sisser, robotic software engineer, and today we're going to be talking about my absolute favorite topic, robotic sensors for perception algorithms. And when I say perception algorithms, that could be anywhere from objects that you're trying to detect for an autonomous vehicle to avoid collision, or it could be a plane that's using sensors, looking down at the ground as it's moving, collecting that information so it later can turn it into a 3D model. Or it could be a robotic arm that's trying to detect something so it can know how to interact with it. So we're going to be talking about six different sensors. We have LiDAR, radar, camera, IR, ultrasonics, and IMU. So let's do the short version. We have camera, radar, LiDAR, and IR are all sensors that detect different wavelengths on the electromagnetic spectrum. And LiDAR shoots out thousands of points into the world, and because the speed of light is constant, we'll get back some of those points so that'll know how far those points have traveled. And you're able to get information on a scene in the world. Uh, LiDAR is really good for getting size and shape of an object, but it has trouble differentiating between one object and another object. It also won't get any returns out of glass or out of water. Um, so you gotta be careful there. But this is where camera comes in. Camera, everyone's heard about neural networks, deep learning, machine learning. And so this is where cameras really shine, where you're able to use them on an image to say, where is the dog? Where is a person? How many people are in the scene? And you can really get more descriptive information on what's in the scene. Now we go into radar. Radar is particularly good in inclement weather, uh, whereas LiDAR is more precise most of the time, uh, but radar does better in inclement weather like raining or with fog. Uh, radar will get you information on the velocity of things. It may not give you a return on every single thing, so the radars that I've worked with, you get maybe one return for every five feet in the world. It does give a lot of really noisy information on something like trees or metal dumpsters. So that's where you can potentially fuse it with camera and detect where is there a tree, filter that data out so you can get better returns. But by using the Doppler effect, you're able to get good velocity information from the radar. IR, or infrared, gives really good information when it comes to heat. So if you're trying to detect where are the human bodies in an environment, or where are animals, or where in my house am I losing efficiency because all of the heat is escaping in the winter, or if a plane or a drone is going overhead and it's trying to find, you know, where's the fire, IR would do particularly well there. You can actually fuse camera and IR to be able to create a depth sensor and that'll give you both camera information and depth information in a scene, which is fantastic. And next, we have ultrasonics, which is no longer the electromagnetic spectrum. We don't have light waves, it's now sound waves. And when you get into sound wave, the first thought is underwater robotics. And that's because sound wave actually travel farther than light waves. So underwater robotics use a lot of ultrasonics. Um, with ultrasonics, you will send the sound waves out and you'll get returns based on the first thing that it hits. So you only get one return for each ultrasonic that you have. So you may need to have multiple ultrasonics to be able to provide coverage. But they're actually particularly good for if you have an autonomous vehicle that has several different sensors that have long range perception sensors. Sometimes you'll have like a gap in coverage. So radars that I worked with, you know, there's like half a meter gap. So if you have a blind spot in there, you may want to put in ultrasonics so that you don't have a blind spot anymore and you don't have any loss in coverage. So that's ultrasonics. Um, and then we have IMU. So IMU, Inertial Measurement Unit, uh, is used for tracking the position and the orientation. Uh, you can do that with a Kalman filter or a particle filter. And if you're getting all of your sensor information in, it's really useless if you don't know where that sensor information is relative to the robot. And that ties in calibration. You can use the benefits of each of the different sensors to come up with the best outcome through your algorithms. Yeah, I would love to be able to hear what sensors you've used and you've enjoyed. And if you have any robotics topics for requests, feel free to mention in the comments. Please consider liking and subscribing and thanks for watching. See you next time.